This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha mai kako. Welcome to Hawaii is my mainland. My name is Kim Kuule Bernie and I'm sitting in for host Kawi Lucas. I'm with Papa Ola Lokahi, but um, Kawi Lucas really talks about issues of sustainability and really focusing on how we can make Hawaii a better place. And I'm in Native Hawaiian Hills, so today we have a really fabulous guest speaker that I think mixes our two missions um, today. And I'd like to uh, introduce Lighty Morgan Bernal, and you're the coordinator for Hawaii Farm to School Hui. Yes. Right. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming in. I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time, so maybe we can just start really broad. Like, what is what is Farm to School? It's kind of a national movement, right? What is yes. Farm to School? It is national and it's international. Farm to School is about creating healthy environments for children around food in schools. And really, there are three core components of Farm to School. Mm -hmm. The first being school gardens. Um, that are integrated with school curriculum. The second being education. So that could be specific to agriculture education, nutrition, food systems education. Right. And the third being school food. So improvements in school food, sourcing more food locally from our farmers. Oh, here in so much to talk about. <laughs> so when I think of school gardens, um, in back in the day, you know, be, even before my time, all the schools had school gardens, right? My, uh, I was a parent at Manoa Elementary School, and there are these historical records that had school gardens back in the 1940s and 1950s, and maybe that came out of, you know, wartime. But all schools had gardens, right? And just to put it in perspective, too, we're talking Aina-based education, Aina-based living, and this is, oh, of that. course, the Hawaii, the legacy of Hawaii. Um, and like you mentioned, gardens were in every school, often serving their produce to the cafeteria. Uh -huh. uh, that declined um, and has started to make a resurgence. Uh, Do we know when that reclined? Uh, declined? That's a good question, probably uh, around after World War II, I think. Um, uh -huh. But in the last really 10 years, this movement has been growing rapidly. And uh, about 10 years ago, school-level programs and island-level networks started to form on each of the main Hawaiian islands. And in 2010, we got together, leaders of these programs and island-level networks, to form a statewide hui called the Hawaii Farm to School Hui. So each of the islands has a network, has a farm to school network or a school garden network, mm -hmm. and that's what makes up the hui. Right, as well as representatives from the State Departments of Health, Agriculture, and Education. Oh, perfect. Yes. So it kind of brings them all together. Right. Yeah, working for a Hawaiian health organization, that's important. I, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to connect us with the food through the land, through the agriculture and that. So I really love to hear that. So what is, what is your role? What is the Hui's role? Right, so I coordinate our statewide Hui and we come together to share information, to collaborate on projects, and to build the statewide movement. One of the things that we have achieved so far was to help um, communicate to the legislature the need for a state-level farm-to-school program, which in 2015, the Hawaii State Legislature did pass a bill to create a farm-to-school program in the Hawaii Department of Education. And we do have a coordinator whose name is Robin Fall. And oh. uh, we work closely together to build the movement, look at uh, what is needed to really enable farmers to supply food to schools, what is needed to support the school gardens that are already growing in 83% of public schools in Hawaii and being used for instruction. 83% of public schools have school gardens right now? That's right. Oh, well, I had no idea. <laughs> so wow. there's an annual safety and wellness survey uh, administered by the Department of Health and Education that shows um, a steady growth in the use of school gardens as an instructional tool in schools and largely used for science, mm -hmm. also Hawaiian studies and health education and other subjects. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, you can teach nutrition. That's right. right. So 83% is a really good percentage for the number of school gardens. How many of those schools actually serve the food that's growing 
on their property? That's a great question because currently within the Hawaii Department of Education, there is no protocol allowing that school garden or school food farm grown produce to be served in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. Students use the produce that is generated by school gardens, school learning gardens, to essentially develop a relationship with healthy, mm -hmm. locally grown food. So that is really the key importance of the school garden component of Farm to School is that kids are developing this firsthand connection with food and where it comes from. And that is so important. And I don't mean to take a, you know, to take away from that. I mean to develop a relationship relationship, excuse me, with the land is so important. But do you think um, it's possible to kind of, will it take time to work on some of those policy issues that really prohibit that mm -hmm. food from being served in the schools? Yes, it's something our hui has aspired to, you know, yeah. since our formation in 2010. And I will yeah. say, you know, with the with the Department of Agriculture stepping up to say, yes, we will have a farm to school program and coordinator mm -hmm. in our department, that has made a lot of progress toward yeah. being able to serve not only locally grown food from local farmers, but also school food farm grown food in school cafeterias. And those conversations are happening, that work is happening. And uh, what we are looking at is having the Department of Education develop their own farm to school program that works in conjunction with Department of Ag yeah. and our HUI community partners to mm -hmm. um, open those doors for the sourcing of locally grown foods in school food and also for to support the ad educational aspects. So there must work. be curriculum already? Curricula? Yeah, actually a couple examples include the Kokua Hawaii Foundation Aina in Schools curriculum which is mm -hmm. agriculture and nutrition and waste reduction education oh. um, focused on K-6. Um, they hold mm -hmm. trainings around the state. Also, the Kohala Center has been a leader in bringing together seasoned educators to develop what's called the School Garden Curriculum Map, yes. which actually really helps to align um, what teachers need to be teaching to, the core, common core standards, Hawaii mm -hmm. state performance standards. Um, with how you can apply that to school learning gardens. So as a coordinator, you, what do you personally, what does your average week look like? Mm -hmm. So I, I just love what I do. It's really <laughs> inspiring. Um, I, I really started out actually as a garden educator and found that when you bring gardens and students, children together, that, that's where the love is. It's, it's so wonderful to see students um, be inspired by gardening and inspired not only to grow food but learning in general, right? Learning really mm -hmm. comes to life in a school garden. So that, you know, set me on the course for understanding the importance of this work and what I get to do now as the coordinator of our HUI is bring together our members and follow through on what we decide as a group to right. focus on. What kind of um, community partnerships are required in order to do that, in order to, to move, move the movement forward? So as I mentioned, on each island there are island level networks and those mm -hmm. are hosted by nonprofit organizations. Ah, such as Kohala Center. Such as Kohala mm -hmm. Center and um, we have Malama Kauai mm -hmm. hosting the Kauai School Garden Network, Sustainable mm -hmm. Molokai hosting the Molokai School Garden Network. On Oahu, it, uh, Pacific Resources for Education and Learning mm -hmm. is hosting the Oahu Farm to School Network and Kohala oh, Center on the Big Island. And then Maui School Garden Network is also very active. So, um, there, you know, these programs are largely funded by private entities. And what we need, the need, is to have the public-private partnership with the state agencies. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. the Department of Health is one that has really recognized the natural connection um, between mm -hmm. farm to school and improved student health um, and school community health as well. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. I have to, and so Department of Health, Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. and the Department of Education. And all of the, what, how big a part does this play in the governor's initiative to double food production? Right, the governor's initiative um, is, is, 
I think, you know, farm to school, I see so many of the questions and problems that we see in our state, farm to school having the answers to those. Um, so I know that in our state, um, people have said, how can we get more locally grown food into mm -hmm. school meals? That's and that's right. been a question for many years, but it's really taken dedicated programs, first in the Department of Agriculture mm -hmm. and working toward uh, the Department of Education, having positions to really open those doors and make right. make those connections happen. And if it's a natural thing for the children, then we'll just have a whole, you know, we're, we're just starting a whole generation that will see it as a norm, a social uh, norm, to absolutely. start growing their own food. Right. And yeah. So yeah. Is there any data on whether children actually take those lessons home mm. and start growing gardens yeah. at home? Absolutely. Um, we've heard it, we hear it anecdotally all mm -hmm. the time um, from parents with kids at a school that, ha that has a school garden, starting gardens at home. The Aina in Schools program with Kokua Hawaii Foundation is very unique because they actually train volunteers to deliver all of the garden and nutrition lessons. Oh. So parents that may not have ever had experience gardening get to come in, get trained, and then teach the garden lessons, and they're mm -hmm. learning right along with the children. Right. Which is really So they wonderful. can take those lessons home, they can yes. take them to their community, to their extended mm -hmm. family. Right. A moment ago, you talked about um, the uh, uh, S, the SAWS report, mm -hmm. something and wellness. Tell me, safety things. and wellness. Safety survey. and wellness. So, what mm -hmm. other data comes out of that study? So that study actually measures schools' implementation of the wellness policy, which mm -hmm. is mandated for all public, non-charter schools to have. So it measures all of the parts of that policy and. Um, oh including, you know, the use of school gardens right. for academic instruction, mm -hmm. right? So, um, like I said, we do have that data and science. So we can actually say that as of the 2015-16 school year, 51% of all public non-charter schools use a school garden for science instruction. That's wonderful, yeah. huh? Yeah. So it's happening, and you talked about research as well. The National Farm to School Network is the organizing body at the national level for this oh. movement, and they have a wonderful publication called The Benefits of Farm to School that looks at studies mm -hmm. showing benefits in right. many different areas from academic achievement improvements, um, and the CDC even is one that recognizes the link between physical activity and academic achievement. Right, of course. And healthy eating, of course. Where does Hawaii land in that, if in this national look at farm mm. to school? So when we passed the legislation to create a state level program, we, mm -hmm. we became the 20th state to have a farm to school program in our state government. Uh -huh. and So your, your position's housed in the government? Actually, my position is not. Mm -hmm because um, the HUI is now a program mm -hmm. of the Hawaii Public Health Institute, oh, yes. which is a nonprofit organization, yes. Yes. right? But mm -hmm. uh, my counterpart in the state government is Robin Fall, who's with the Department of Agriculture. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, good. So it really is a partnership. I mean, oh. it really is a, yes. it, kind of like our our, uh, I don't want to, well, compare it to the, our Murray National Monument. It's kind of a partnership of many different governmental and private organizations. It is, and it's really amazing to see what we can do when we come together. We meet quarterly to communicate with each other and, and make progress to build this movement. And other states, in fact, have looked to our HUI and our statewide network as a model for the level of communication and collaboration that is happening. Oh, as a model for other states. Right. Oh, fantastic. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, then maybe we can talk about what we're doing that's special or unique. You know, how are we a model mm -hmm. to other places? Great. Okay, very Thank good. Thank you. Aloha. I'm Tim Apachaw, host for Moving Hawaii Forward, a show dedicated to transportation issues and traffic. We identify those areas where we do have problems in the state, but also the show is dedicated to trying to find solutions, not just detail our problems. So join me every other Tuesday on Moving Hawaii Forward. I'm Tim Apachella. Thank you. 
I'm going to the game and it's gonna be great. Early arriving for a little tailgate. I usually drink but won't be drinking today cause I'm the designated driver and that's okay. It's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line. Keeps them from drinking too much so we can have a great time. A little responsibility can go a long way cause it's all about having fun on game day. I'm the guy you wanna be. I'm the guy saving money. I'm the guy with the H2O and I'm the guy that says let's go. Aloha and welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. My name is Kim Kuule Bernie. I'm sitting in for your host, Kaui Lucas, and we're talking to Lydie Morgan Bernal, who is the state coordinator for the Farm to School Hui here in Hawaii. And we were just talking about uh, how how the Hawaii Hui is a model for other places, other places across the United States. Tell us mm -hmm. what what's so special. Mm. You know, it's the same way that Hawaii is special in the world. I think we have the spirit of aloha, the, mm -hmm. the spirit of collaboration, and willingness oh. to work together. Um, so is it the way we collaborate? I think so. Um, and when it comes to growing food, obviously, you know, we can be a model for regenerative community food systems for the world. Regenerative is, community food like systems, I like that. Yeah. So are you saying that other states aren't doing aren't doing that, aren't putting together these partnerships? Actually, they certainly are, and we often look to other states mm -hmm. uh, for their best practices, and the right. National Farm to School Network, and there's also a National School Garden Network. Those two organizations will typically host webinars, conferences, trainings, mm -hmm. where state leaders can come in, collaborate, and, yeah. and go forward. I yeah. see some of those webinars every once yeah. in a while. A mm -hmm. lot of that comes across my desk at Papa Olalokahi, and I get mm -hmm. real excited um, when I see those kinds of programs. So I know that there are some special initiatives that you're tackling right now, mm -hmm. too. Can you tell us about some of them? Certainly, and one of the ones that I wanted to share is about outreach around la, uh, rat lungworm disease. Oh, for, how are you involved in that? Yeah. So, um, I personally actually had three friends that had gotten the disease several years ago. So oh. it was on my radar. Here or on Hawaii um, Island? Two on Hawaii Island and one on Maui. Wow. And so I personally recognized the need to be proactive about prevention and especially um, oh. for students. So really how we look at this is not something to hide and shy away from, but an, an opportunity to educate mm -hmm. and to prevent, right? That's yes, the most important thing. Yeah. So what we did in 2015 and 2016 was to develop a best practices for Hawaii school gardens manual, mm -hmm. and that is available through our website. Um, we also have worked with the UAH. What is your website? Okay, so Hawaii School Garden Hui dot org. Hawaii School Garden Hui dot org. Yes. Got it. Yes, and there okay. are more resources if you look at the Hawaii Department of Agriculture's webpage and click on the Farm to School link or just so Google. any school anybody really can go to your website and download that. Right. And some of the tips are wash your vegetables right. and wash what else? your hands. Um, so really in a school garden um, we're we're taking it to the next level through the work of UH Hilo College of Pharmacy. Uh, we work oh. with a researcher there named K Howe mm -hmm. H O W E and you know, their lab, Susan Jarvie's lab, are really the experts in the state. They've been doing the research as much as they can to understand the disease because, there, you yeah. know, there was quite a bit of research from what we understand when the first few cases came out and then almost nothing for the last several decades. So, um, you know, one of their concerns is water catchment and mm -hmm. the fact that the larvae can live inside Catchment, yeah. um, even and especially in Puna volcano right. areas yeah. like that, which is all water catchment. Right. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to school gardens, the K is developing a curriculum to, and she has piloted it on the Big Island um, to help teachers and students really do science projects around this issue. Um, oh. So they're setting traps. 
for slugs and snails, mm -hmm. testing which ones work best, mm -hmm. and then identifying, learning to identify the different species. We really also don't know what species are where in this state. So the way that we look at this oh. is an opportunity to have real data collection mm -hmm. it's put into a database for policymakers to oh. make better decisions about what's happening. Um, and it's so necessary. Yeah. So the HUI's role is really around that community education and developing the, the manual. Right, so we develop resources like the mm -hmm. best practices manual. We offer professional development. Oh. Um, Right. You know, for example, how do you... For farmers. Well, mostly for educators mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> how do you integrate a school garden program with your, you know, classroom core curriculum? Those are the right. types of professional development. We recently held the Farm to School Symposium in mm -hmm. conjunction with the Hawaii Ag Conference. Right. Yeah. That was recently, right? Yeah. Just a few weeks ago. And our members have held school garden conferences for educators for many years and we are uh, planning a student school garden conference oh. um, for March. So of the, students will of be the presenters? Year. Right, oh, exactly, cool. yes. Very yeah. good. They, so that's a whole educational piece right there. They learn mm -hmm. how to be presenters, mm -hmm. put together presentations, what's important yeah. to convey. Right, and what's wonderful about gardens again is that Typically, you know, it can, it's about equity too, because the way that students are taught for the most part in a school doesn't fit the educational needs of every student. So, right. you know, we often hear of a student that doesn't do well, can't focus well in a classroom, will be the shining star in a yeah. garden. Well, makahana ka'ike, right? It's right. through the work that one learns and That's that right. some students just excel in the hana. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also know of more and more school counselors using the garden to uh -huh. provide one-on-one -on -one counseling for students. Um, and guidance counseling for the classes that they teach. Mm. Um, Hoa Aina o Makaha, yes. it, which is a five acre farm next to Makaha Elementary School, is really a leader in our movement. They've been around for right, 35 years. Right. And it's a place of peace. You know, Gigi Kokio, who is mm -hmm. the founder, has seen generations of students come back and say, the only thing I remember about my entire elementary experience is coming to the garden. Aww. So that's the kind of lifelong impact that gardens have, that tasting fresh foods that you've mm -hmm. planted, cared for, and harvested, that's that leaves right. a lifelong impact. Yeah, uh, where I work, we're in the process of updating the Aola Mal report, so we're talking about this food and nutrition piece, and in order to do that, we're going back into the history, mm -hmm. and really the only entities that existed in growing your own food were Ka'ala Farm, it was mm -hmm. called Ka'ala Farm then, <laughs> with Eric Enos, yes. and, uh, and Gigi's uh -huh. at, at Ho'aina. Right. Yeah, so nice to hear you mention that, and now mm -hmm. there are just so many more. There are. Right, so <laughs> there's another initiative, what else are you in? involved? What else is the HUI involved with? So I also would love to mention the Farm to School initiative that's spearheaded uh -huh. by the Lieutenant Governor, Shan mm -hmm. Tsui, um, in partnership with the Department of Education School Food Services branch where they actually... Yes, in, I want to get into the school food yeah. services. <laughs> so in uh, last school year, 2016-2017, they initiated a pilot to um, actually totally revamp the you know the food that served on students plates so they were working with Kohala Elementary mm -hmm. middle and high school on yes. Hawaii Island and um, local farmers so uh, a consultant was hired to basically bring in the skills needed and then worked really closely with students and cafeteria staff to ask you know what is it you want to eat what is it you want to mm -hmm. serve so um, kind of modifying local local favorites yes. to be scratch cooked, healthy scratch cooked and locally sourced. Which is how it used to be, right? right. When I was growing up it was, schools were like yeah. that. But then it kind of moved into the cafeteria folks heated food, right. heated mm -hmm. up food. Mm -hmm. But now we want to get them into producing it themselves, it's right? True. And there are also efforts to have central kitchens where, you know, a 
a sauce might be made using locally mm -hmm. grown foods, including mm -hmm. farm, farm seconds that may not be the beautiful right. ones offered to the... The mushy tomato. Yeah. Well, yeah are the, it's just, still good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we can uh, look at ways to, you know, make the cost also Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not so prohibitive. Mm -hmm. So. I know that with the Department of Education, you're mostly working with public schools, and I have some mo'opuna that go to schools, and so two schools specifically, and they're both aipono schools, mm. and that means a caterer comes in and they eat aipono, and they don't eat Hawaiian food every day, but they eat mm. aipono, right? Mm -hmm. So it's always healthy, and we're not allowed to take sugar sweets mm -hmm. to those schools, mm -hmm. so I'm looking forward to when all the schools have That's that. That's right. Have, Absolutely. Have those guidelines. Yes. <laughs> Yes. On every plate. I mean, yeah. uh, the Department of Ag Farm to School program is ki kicking off a Harvest of the Month oh. program where a local um, item will be featured each month, and mm -hmm. this is also in conjunction with Kokua Hawaii Foundation that has beautiful educational resources. Yes, um, so like October is always Pumpkin Month, right? <laughs> that's right. And to mention October, it is Farm to School Month, so it's been oh, National Farm timing. to School Month for a number of years, and this year in the legislature, uh, they passed the bill to, to designate October as Farm to School Month in Hawaii. Oh, very good. Yeah. So what's going to be happening? We've got about a minute to talk about okay. the activities this month. So we're excited to kick off Farm to School Month this Sunday on October 1st at the Hawaii State Capitol with Children and Youth Day. It's a free event oh. from 10 to 3, and we're going to have a Farm to School Zone on the Iolani Palace grounds. So oh. come and look for us. We're also giving away free kalo huli for those that can oh, that promise can take to take home. good yeah. care of them. <laughs> And plant them. Yes, grow yes. your own. Yes, grow your own. Food. Take Haloa home yes. with you. Oh, terrific. And any other activities going on throughout the month? Well, you can look on the Department of Agriculture Farm to School website for okay. a list of activities. And also, if you have your own, such as any kind of garden building day at your school, mm -hmm. um, do plan that and let us know about it. We can share. That, uh, you can email us at, far at F2S. Farm to School, F2S. F2S at hawaii.gov. So that's the letter F, number yeah. two, and letter S. In a couple of seconds, what, do you, what last message do you want to make sure that people get? Uh, it's about connecting to the source of our well-being, the aina it is about connecting. and aipono. Right. It's more than just food. I mean, we are what we eat. Right. And if we all internalize that, then we'll, we'll, we'll eat better. We'll yeah, eat better. And we'll be happier. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much, Lighty, Lighty Morgan Bernal here visiting, mm -hmm. um, coordinator of the Farm to School Kui here in Hawaii. We're so glad to have you. And I'm sure that Kawi will want to have you back again mm -hmm. because she's really missing out on not being able to speak with you. Um, I know she wants to. <laughs> yeah, and our movement continues to grow. So the movement happy. continues to go. And I think that we at Papa Olilo Kahi will want to talk with you a little bit more too and figure mm -hmm. out where we can intersect, you know, what opportunities for Very partnership. Good. Yes. Thank you so much. I'm Kim Kuule Bernie. I'm sitting in for Kawi Lucas today on Hawaii is my mainland. And mahalo to Lady Morgan Bernal and aloha.